Hi, my name is Shane. Thanks for hanging out today. I'm going to show you some different techniques for muffling your drum set. I will do some sound recordings and some comparisons and you can see how they sound relative to one another. So the big question is, why would you want to muffle your drums? You know, you spend all this money, all this time uh, tuning, you think your drums sound great, then someone comes along, a recording engineer, someone doing live sound, uh, or even a bandmate, and says, hey, we've got to muffle those things. Why would you want to do uh, that to your beautifully sounding drums? Um, if you are playing in a rock band or a jazz setting or somewhere where you're uh, not close micing your toms, maybe you have a kick, snare, uh, an overhead mic, or maybe not an overhead, and your toms are not you know, being close mic'd and pumped through separate channels, you can probably get away without any sort of muffling at all. Um, the problem is when you start to close mic drums, after that initial attack, there's a lot of rumbling and resonance going on uh, that you don't necessarily want on a recording or you don't want uh, going through the PA. You kind of want that attack, a short decay, and you want those toms to uh, get out of there as soon as possible. So there are a number of uh, muffling techniques that you can use to achieve that. And uh, speaking of engineers, uh, if you've hired someone that you trust uh, to make a recording, to run your, uh, your sound in a live show, you should then trust those guys uh, to know what's best uh, for the toms. A lot of drummers are very reluctant to do anything to their toms. They, uh, they don't want to muffle them. Um, I've heard from a lot of old timers, you know, I'll just tune out what ails the drum. Um, the problem is if the, what ails your drum is too much resonance, there's really no way to tune that out. Uh, if, you're, you know, if the drum is in tune with itself, it's just going to ring. Uh, and there's no way to tune your drum to make it ring less and still sound good. You're going to introduce a lot of weird overtones that might make the problem worse. Uh, that's on the toms. On the snare, um, a lot of snares, especially if they're metal, uh, just have some inherent overtones that you may or may not uh, want in your recording. So trust the engineers. If they want you to do something, at least try it. Um, you are perfectly within your rights to uh, ask to you know, then hear the final product. You know, muffle the, the, the uh, toms however someone wants you to go and listen to it um, and you might find uh, that you actually like that sound. What the drums sound like to you here at the kit and what they sound like on a recording or uh, out into the audience are often very different. I have run into many situations uh, where you know the same drum kit that I bring out night after night sounds completely different depending on the room I'm in. Uh, if it's a small room, uh, maybe the sounds are bouncing a lot, around a lot. Uh, you could be playing outside and it's wide open. You know, you're over a lake. Uh, in those cases, you know what you're going to do your toms to get a good sound is going to vary. So uh, make sure you are prepared and. Uh, also be versatile, you know, have some different uh, methods at your disposal uh, and try anything to get a good sound. I would not be someone that's, you know, really stringent. I'm never going to muffle my toms or I'm always going to muffle them this way uh, because you're going to be in different situations and uh, you might find yourself needing different methods. Today I'm going to record uh, the drum sounds alone. Uh, then I'm also going to play some grooves, you know, some toms in them. And then I have a loop to play along to uh, so you can hear uh, drums in all three of those settings. The drums I'm using today are a Yamaha Stage Custom Birch. Uh, the heads are coated emperors on the top, coated ambassadors on the bottom. Uh, so that's you know, a pretty typical setup. Um, you don't have the coated heads on the bottom a lot of the times, but that's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, I've got Shure SM57s on the snare, both toms, a Shure Beta 52 inside the kick. Uh, and for the snare today, I've uh, purposely chosen one that, you know, rings quite a lot on its own. It is a Ludwig Acrylite, and I'm going to go ahead and muffle the snare along with the toms the same way. Um, you're not necessarily going to do that live. You're probably going to muffle your toms one way and want a different sound out of your snare. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do them all at the same time so you can compare how those sound in uh, you know, relation to one another. So the muffling methods I'm going to show you today are uh, here on the bench. Uh, some of them I'm sure you've seen before, and some of them are a little unusual or you might not have seen. I'm going to start off with uh, the one I came into contact with first playing, uh, and these are the studio rings. Uh, every company makes these. They call them different things, uh, but basically they just go on top of the uh, drum head and muffle that way. Uh, the next most common one came out a little bit later in my playing career are the gels. Um, Moon Gel was the first company uh, to come out with these. Um, they work great. I don't use them because they are square, and after a while the, the corners kind of uh, curl up. Uh, so I've gone with these drum dots. Um, Meinl also has a uh, brand, I believe they're called Buzz Kills. Uh, so any kind of gel works. Uh, you can even go to a uh, hobby store and get like a window cling kit and cut those out. 
Um, that's very useful as well. Um, there is the uh, dreaded duct tape. Um, you know, if you've got tape, someone in your band's got tape, you're always going to be able to use this method, uh, even if you're not prepared uh, otherwise. Um, there is the, uh, the tea towel method, uh, an old British term. I think, you know, it started with Ringo and the old British guys putting towels on your drums. Um, no one really says that in the United States. These are kind of just dish towels. Uh, those muffle severely, uh, and it's kind of an effect. You wouldn't want to use that all the time, but we're going we're gonna to do that. Um, and a couple unusual techniques. One is cotton balls. I uh, came across that first um, watching Benny Greb's tuning uh, videos, and he puts those inside the drum, and those kind of muffle just the bottom head. Uh, you know, they bounce up when you hit the drum and uh, settle back down on the bottom head and muffle that way. Um, and another one I just discovered, although it's probably been around a while, um, was from an Akira Jimbo video. Akira Jimbo video, excuse me. Uh, and this is like a gate. You know, I'm going to put it on the, the rim of the tom, and this, this piece of fabric is going to flop up when I hit the drum and then settle back down and uh, muffle the, uh, the overtones. So we'll uh, see how all of these work here coming up. The first thing I'm going to let you hear is the drums wide open. No muffling whatsoever on anything. Uh, the snare drum is really ringy, uh, especially if I don't hit it dead center, so you'll notice that. Uh, the toms sound good. They are tuned with a drum dial. Uh, the 12-inch... 12 by 8 is uh, 76 on the top and bottom. The 16 by 14 is 74 on the top and bottom on the drum dial. Uh, so you will hear how they sound completely wide open. Uh, in addition to the, the close mics, I've also got a Zoom H6. It's right above my head. Uh, so I will blend those sounds together. Um, the less muffling I have on the toms, uh, the more I'm probably going to have to back off on those tom mics and go more of the overheads. Uh, but I'll get a nice blend uh, when I'm mixing it together, and I will flash up on the screen you know how I've done that. So let's check them out just completely wide open. So there's the wide open uh, sound on these drums. Um, you could probably tell that the floor tom rings, you know, a really long time. Uh, I'd have a hard time using that in a recording if it was close mic'd. Uh, we'll see how it comes out uh, and we'll move on to the next one. Check it out. The first actual muffling technique I'm going to use are the studio rings. Uh, you'll hear that the snare has most of those uh, high ringy overtones gone. Uh, the toms still, uh, you know, have a really nice round sound. The decay is cut a little bit. Uh, but it's still there, you know, I mean, the floor time still rings quite a bit, so uh, check out how this sounds.
So that was the uh, studio ring muffling technique. Uh, you can see the drums still, you know, sound really good, really full, and uh, and you know, mostly open. And the decay was cut a little bit. Uh, the snare drum got a little bit choked off, uh, but you know, you can mix and match these uh, as you need to. Next up are the muffling gels. I've got two on the floor tom, one on the 12-inch tom, and one on the snare drum. Uh, this is really similar to the uh, studio rings. You know, it cuts most of the overtones out of the snare and the decay on the toms, but they still sound nice and open. Uh, the good thing about these is you can use, you know, fewer or more of them. You can cut them in half. Uh, you can experiment there um, where with the rings, you're, you know, you're just kind of locked into that one uh, level of muffling. So check out the uh, gels. All right, there were the gels, uh, you know, nice and open sound, uh, cuts the decay, gets rid of the, uh, the ringing in the snare drum. So next up is the uh, tape technique. Hopefully this uh, tape is actually non-residue as advertised and it uh, doesn't leave any marks on my head. Uh, you kind of make a little ribbon out of it like that. Um, and the theory is that, you know, these flaps that hang up on the top are going to absorb some of the sound. Uh, that's what I've been told, you know, my whole life, however. Uh, we'll see how that goes.
So there is the uh, tape technique. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come through on the mics or not, but I, uh, you know, hear some flapping and buzzing. You know, those those ribbons up there kind of move back and forth. Uh, so that may or may not come out on uh, the recording. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that by now. Uh, I'm really anxious to get the tape off these heads before any residue uh, is left there. Uh, so let's move on. Next up is going to be the tea towel method, as my uh, British friends so uh, fondly refer to it. Uh, no one in the U.S. really says tea towels, so these are kind of like dish towels. Uh, they're linen. Uh, and they're very, very thin, so I'm only putting them on the drums, you know, with one layer, uh, you know, and they muffle them significantly. Uh, so this isn't really something you're going to want to use, you know, on a regular basis. It's more of an effect, uh, but it does sound really cool. Uh, you can, you know, crank up those close mics uh, and, you know, process them, do whatever you want. I'm going to just, uh, you know, mess with the volume and not any effects, uh, but you can go wild here and, you know, do some really cool things and get some uh, unusual sounds. So check out the uh, tea towel method. So there's the tea towel method. Uh, I think it sounds really good when you're, you know, writing on the floor tom uh, and as an effect. I mean, I wouldn't use this all the time, uh, but it definitely has its place. You know, it's kind of the extreme of muffling where there's, you know, basically no resonance. Uh, the snare sounds really good. Uh, you could, you know, detune that, you know, really low and get a nice big fat funky sound. Uh, if you watch Wolfpack, any, uh, you know, any of those videos, that's the sound those guys use a lot on their snare. And it's just, it's really cool. And a lot of people like it. So uh, check that out. This next method is uh, very new to me. A couple weeks ago, I saw on Facebook a, uh, a commercial for an Akira Jimbo instructional video, and he had these like gate, you know, uh, muffling gates on all his toms. And uh, I immediately noticed, you know, that it was n like nothing I'd ever seen. Uh, this technique might have been around for a while, and I was just unaware. Uh, but it's really cool because your um, your initial attack is right where you normally have it. Uh, then it throws this little piece of fabric up in the air, uh, and then it settles back down and kind of you know kills the decay time. Uh, so I can see myself using this on a lot of future YouTube videos because uh, that's the biggest problem I have. You know, my toms sound great, uh, but the decay time is just way too long, and I'm I'm going into all the files and kind of you know doing that uh, manually, uh, you know, altering the wave file and, you know, muting the, the uh, tom mics when they're not uh, recording actual toms. You know, I'll, uh, I will play the entire tune and only have the tom mics on for the fills because, you know, I don't want all that leaking in. You know, it's kind of a, I'm sure, you know, some people are cringing right now and say you should leave all the mics on all the time. Uh, that's not the sound I like, uh, you know, for my YouTube videos, but I'm, I'm sure that is very valid in, in other situations that I'm not in. Uh, but check this out. I'll, uh, you know, do a comparison with and without the gate and you can uh, hear how that sounds.
So there is the uh, fabric gate, I guess you would call it. I'm not sure uh, you know, if there's already a name there. Uh, new to me, but it's uh, very handy. I think I'm going to start using that in some of my YouTube videos in the future. Uh, so check that one out. All right, the last one I'm going to try today is uh, cotton balls. Actually, I, uh, I picked this up from a uh, Benny Greb video. Uh, he uses either cotton balls or like a you know, square piece of cotton batting. Uh, and he puts that in the bottom of his floor tom. And Benny is known for like, you know, this monstrous floor tom sound. Everybody loves it. Um, what that does is it, uh, you know, the same thing that, that the gates did on the top, uh, the balls kind of raise up when you hit it and they settle back down and kill some of those, you know, uh, decay overtones. So the attack's all there, uh, then it kills some of that decay. Uh, I am going to use some gels on the top. Um, that's what, uh, what Benny does, uh, and it works out pretty well. Uh, I'm also doing this last because I'm going to have to take the heads off these drums, you know, to get these things uh, out of it later. So uh, check out the cotton ball method. So there's the uh, cotton ball inside the drum method. Uh, you know that uh, requires a little bit of setup. You got to take the heads off, uh, possibly. Uh, so that's kind of a you know special use. Um, you can do that on your floor tom all the time. I mean, a lot of floor toms are really deep. You know, and they kind of ring a lot more than the uh, their counterparts on the rack on a, on a kit. So uh, you know, three or four cotton balls in the bottom of your uh, floor tom. You know, that can uh, uh, be left in there all the time if you want. So uh, hopefully this video has been helpful, all these uh, different muffling methods, you know, some of which I'm sure you've seen, some of which you might not have seen. 
Uh, the important thing here is to be versatile. You know, don't get married to one kind of sound and you know, refuse to change. Uh, throughout your life, you're probably going to play a lot of different drum sets, uh, a lot of different tunings in different situations. You know, and some things are appropriate uh, you know, for certain songs, and some things work for uh, you know, other situations. Uh, drums are not like, you know, like a piano where you know, there's a really good accepted good sound, and you know, a lot of different pianos will be able to produce you know, something pretty close. Or uh, something like a saxophone, where a player can literally, you know, play one horn for their entire life. Uh, with drums, you know, you're going to end up in different situations. So uh, my advice to you is, you know, be really versatile. Uh, listen to sound engineers and people you trust. Uh, you know, if you're doing a recording or you're live, go out, you know, into the front of the house, listen to someone else play your drums. Uh, go into the control room, listen to the toms, to the drums, to the sound. Uh, you know, talk to people. And uh, don't be reluctant to change and don't be stubborn because uh, those are the kind of guys that uh, don't get hired. You know, if you're set in your ways and you won't do anything else, uh, somebody else will just get the call. So make sure you uh, subscribe to all these social media sites. Check out some of uh, my other videos, the covers, the tutorials. Uh, leave some comments down below. I'm sure there's methods uh, that I missed here. Uh, some of these sounds I'm sure you hated. Uh, some you liked. You know, if you want to discuss those, I am open to that. I'll always try to uh, answer as many comments as I can. Uh, and you take care.